Well, sometimes they say God's very subtle and you have to listen to the silent whispers in your ear. Uh, in my case, it was more like he was hitting me over the head with a baseball bat. There's a lady waiting for men to come by, so uh, and she smiled, so I stopped and said hello. And we, I, she said, would you sit down with me just now? And as we sat, she said, listen to this. And she recited the, the 13th Psalm from heart. God, why do you allow my enemies to beat me up? Why have you forsaken me? And it goes through like that, and at the very end, the Psalm says, but I will still trust in you, God. I believe in your presence. So I said, where did you learn that? She said, I learned it in jail. It's the one thing that gave me hope when I was in jail. Most of what we do, at least I know for myself, most of what I do is not done on my own accord. I do believe that I, I, I need and I always have to invoke the Spirit to work with me and through me in everything I do. These men are ordained ministers of the Catholic Church. They come from all walks of life. Most have full-time jobs and are married with families. They are deacons, called to serve in the ministry of Christ to the marginalized and those in the fringes of society. Deacons are icons of Christ the servant. Through their example, the deacons remind all Christians of their baptismal call to be of service to one another, to the needy, and to their neighbor. Deacons are engaged in a ministry of the liturgy, the ministry of the word, and the ministry of charity. And they have been from the very earliest days of the church. Of those three, it is really the ministry of charity which is the foundation. Their service of those who are marginalized, of those who are in need, that is the very basis of the order of those who are ordained to the sacrament of service. But they also preach the gospel, and have been doing that from the very earliest times as we see in the Acts of the Apostles and they are engaged in the liturgy of the church. Approximately 500 years after the time of the apostles, the diaconate became a transitional step to the priesthood. It was restored as a permanent order of the church by the Second Vatican Council and in the Archdiocese of Toronto in 1972, where currently more than 120 deacons are in active pastoral and liturgical service. Bill Burns, visiting chaplain. On in. Thank you. As deacons, we go in, and we're not psychologists, we're not psychiatrists. Uh, we go in, we are people who hopefully are able to listen and, uh, and, and to share our lives with them as well. At the heart of Jesus' message is radical love and radical forgiveness. Week in and week out, the deacons take this message to people who are in real need. <laughs> Some of the things have been going. Good. The biggest part for me has been my prison ministry. I'm visiting people who are in detention centers at the front end of the, of the justice process. I work with people who are either serving the last third of their sentence in halfway houses or, or back in the community and trying to reintegrate. And I'm working with my wife uh, with families of uh, incarcerated individuals. My ministry is to ex-offenders and uh, it is not only just to the ex-offender population, both male and female, but to some of the you know, guys that have really had a very long history of offenses, some serious ones. It's radical in nature. It's uh, following the call, though, the, the gospel that really catches me is when Jesus reaches down and touches the leper. So this is a ministry to those that really nobody else wants to talk to, nobody else wants to have anything to do with. They've been uh, you know, shoved into the corners of society. So it is really a dramatic call to do that kind of work and offer friendship to those that nobody wants to be a friend to. One of the things I learned very early was you're not there to fix their problems. You can't change what they've done. You can't change the consequences. Uh, so you're there to be with them and be present to them. And, and I let them set the agenda. I don't try and go in with a preset notion of what we're going to talk about or what we're going to accomplish. Deacons are catalysts. They are called to be catalysts. They generate and lead lay people into ministry of service. 
they awaken and remind lay people of their baptismal call. When people marry, they make a permanent commitment to a particular way of life. The deacon makes a commitment to a particular way of life, a role of caring for those who are not so fortunate. Almost all deacons are married men with children and sometimes grandchildren. At the center of every deacon's ministerial life is this family, especially his wife, whose cooperation and encouragement is a spiritual necessity. Together, deacon and wife share a new phase of their married life, often finding themselves closer and more in tune with each other than ever before. As a deacon, I cannot function without her approval. We have to be very, very aware of the idea that my, the marriage comes first. We uh, have had our ups and downs. It's been very, very good in the way that it's brought us close together. Our prayer life has improved. Our communication channels are more open and we become more patient and accommodating to one another. Mike's changed on a level that um, he's, a, he's a much deeper guy now. He's much more in tune with how he's feeling and he's able to share that. She is my conscience in, 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 a lot of, in a lot of ways, helping me to discern how far I go in ministry and how to pull back and how to actually do that balancing thing. Practice that, prudence. Yeah.